good morning dear students welcome to second session of science class as you know in the first session we have started with the chapter food where does it come from we have discussed the definition of food and we have also discussed various sources of food we have also discussed some various activities related to that chapter now we'll discuss some more important topics so let's begin so our first topic for today is parts of plant as food we consume different parts of plant as food so let's discuss various parts of plants are used as food material by us we eat roots of some plants we also eat fruits stem and even flowers of some plants so we consume different parts of plant as food in some plants two or more parts can be used as food very important so in some plants what happens two or more parts can be consumed as food for example let's see the example seeds of mustard plants give us oil and the leaves are used as vegetables so in mustard plant seed and leaves are consumed as food so two parts can be consumed as food in mustard plant so in mustard plant seeds and leaves are used as food now what is edible how can we define how can we define edible so let us discuss the substances which we can eat is called edible so any substance which we can eat our body can digest that sub that substance that is called edible different parts of plants are edible so in different plants different parts are edible in some plants two or more parts are edible like we discussed the example of mustard plant for example in mustard plant seed and leaves are edible in banana plant fruit and flowers are edible so in banana plant also two parts are edible that is fruit and flowers we consume different parts of plant like roots stem leaves fruit flowers seed so we consume different parts of different plants so parts of plant plants as source of food let us discuss first is roots so in which plant we consume its root let us discuss that so radish turnip carrot beetroot are some of the roots that are eaten as vegetables so radish turnip carrot and beetroot are nothing but roots of their respective plant and we consume roots of these plants so radish turnip carrot and beetroot are nothing but roots which are consumed as vegetables next is stem so potato and ginger are the stems that are eaten as vegetables so potato and ginger are nothing but modified stem means potato and ginger are stems of their respective plants next is leaves so spinach cabbage are the leaves eaten as vegetables so spinach and cabbage are nothing but leaves of their respective plants so we consume leaves of spinach and cabbage plants as vegetables next is flowers so broccoli and cauliflower are flowers eaten in the form of vegetables so broccoli and cauliflower are the flowers which are eaten as vegetables so they are flowers or flowers of their respective plant i hope you must have understood next is fruit so we all know that we eat fruits of different plants like apple pear tomatoes grapes cherries oranges are fruits of their respective plants that you all know next is seeds so we also consume seeds of different plants like pulses cereal seeds means rice wheat etc wheat etc mustard seeds sunflower seeds are seeds of their respective plants so these are the different parts of plant which we can consume as food next is oil seeds what are oil seeds so the seeds which are grown mainly for oil so the seeds which are grown mainly for extracting oil from it are called oil seeds very important the seeds of plants that give us oil are castor castor sunflower mustard coconut etc so castor sunflower mustard coconut are oil seeds because we extract oil from these plants very important you all you, we have we have all heard about sunflower oil mustard oil coconut oil castor oil so we extract oil from the seeds of these plants next comes the activity so let's discuss the activity choose some food items whose ingredients are obtained from plants so we have to choose some food items 
whose ingredients are obtained from plants and identify from which part of plant these ingredients are obtained so we have to identify from which part of plant these ingredients are obtained so let us discuss like first is brinjal curry so the ing ingredients for brinjal curry are brinjal chili oil oil these three are ingredients so first ingredient ingredient is brinjal so brinjal so brinjal is nothing but fruit it is obtained from fruit of brinjal plants brinjal is nothing but a modified fruit next is chili so chili is also a fruit so chili is obtained from fruit of chili plant next is oil so we know oil is obtained from seeds of different plants so so the the, the part of plant from which we will obtain oil uh, is seed so next is chapati so the ingredient used for making chapati is wheat and we obtain wheat from seeds of wheat plant next is idli so the main, main ingredients used for preparing idli are rice and urad, urad dal so rice and urad dal both are obtained from obtained from seeds of their respective plants so in this way you can also uh, write down two to three food items and write down their ingredients and you have to identify from which part of plant part of the plant these ingredients are obtained so what's the conclusion of this activity so let's see the conclusion our food ingredients come from different parts of plant so we have seen that we obtain different ingredients from different parts of plant through this activity like root fruit seed stem flower so this was our activity next topic is sprouted seeds we have all seen sprouted seeds so how can we define sprouted seeds when the seeds begin to grow by developing small white structure then the seeds are called sprouted seeds so when seeds starts to grow and small white structures appear on it then the seeds are called sprouted seeds or we can also define sprouted seed as the germinating seeds at the initial stages produces white structure then the seeds are called sprouted seeds so the germinating seeds when produces white structure then these seeds are called sprouted seeds how to prepare sprouted seeds let's discuss take some dry seeds of moong or chana so we have to take dry seeds of moong or chana put a small quantity of seeds in a container filled with water so we have to keep the seeds in a container containing water and leave this aside for a day and you have to keep it aside for a day next day drain the water completely so we have to drain the water and leave the seeds in the vessel and we have to keep the seed leave the seeds in the vessel wrap them with a piece of wet cloth and we have to wrap the seeds with a wet cloth next day you will find white structure has grown out these are sprouted seeds so next day we will see the, the the seeds begin to sprout and these seeds are called sprouted seeds so in this way we can prepare sprouted seeds the boiled seeds fail to sprout so when we boil the seeds they they fail to sprout means uh, they, the seeds will not produce any white structure because boiling denatures or damages certain enzymes or proteins that are required for germination so when we boil the seeds what happens the certain enzymes or proteins which are responsible for sprouting gets damaged so due to which boiled boiled seeds do not sprout so boiled seeds will not sprouts because boiling denatures or damages certain proteins or enzymes so you must remember this so our next topic is nectar and honey so we know that honey bee produces honey with the help of nectar that is produced that is secreted from flowers so let us discuss what is nectar so nectar is defined as sweet juices found in flowers are known as nectar so sweet juices which are found in flowers are known as nectar honey bee collect nectar from flowers so honey bee collects nectar from flower convert it into honey and store it in their hive so honey bee collect nectar from flower and store it in their hive or bee hive flower flowers and the nectar may be available only for part of year or so so what happen uh, flowers are available only for certain part of the year so bees store their nectar for their use throughout the year so at that time when flowers produce nectar of flowers available flowers are available honey bee collect nectar and store it in their beehive and produces honey from it 
when we find such a beehive we collect food stored by bees as honey and when we find that that beehive which is rich in honey which has lot of honey we collect honey from it so this is how we collect honey from beehive and honey is produced from the nectar which is uh, which honey bees collect from the flowers so this is about honey and nectar so this finishes our today's session i hope you must have understood thank you for watching